porn's moved into a really ugly stage with, you know, there's such a, a concentration on aggressive acts like spitting, choking. Choking is terrible. Um, slapping across the face. It's become very much like that. And young men are growing up to think that this is what a normal sex session is like. This is normal real life sex. It is not, porn is nothing like real life sex. What is sex? Well, sex certainly isn't intercourse. And what? people need to stop thinking of sex as intercourse. Sex is any type of, any type of feeling, word, thought that makes you feel aroused. That's how I describe sex. And what, what purpose is it solving? Why does it exist? To create other human beings. This is why, you know, our going right back to the beginning, this whole thing that we have that, you know, why can't we have the sex at the beginning all the way through? Because it doesn't suit, it wouldn't work. If you were have so in, you know, lust driven and all you wanted to do was shag like rabbits, you would never get anything else done. You certainly wouldn't have children. You certainly wouldn't have a job. So we are designed to keep the world in a safe place. We go through lust and infatuation, romance, attachment for a reason, so that we calm down, we don't have the hot sex and we keep the world, you know, we bring up our children in a sensible way and the world continues. Okay, so let's go back up to this 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 initial question. My friends, they're in their thirties. Sexless. Sexless relationships. They are increasingly frustrated about it, it seems. Mm. Um, it's funny, I've got like, yeah, you know, I've got this collection of my best friends. So we're very talkative and communicative around our sex lives and stuff. And I just noticed that in various ways, they're in situations where they're not, they don't feel like they're getting enough sex from their partner and they see it as a critical problem, which which might result in them, for example, being um, cheating or um, ending the relationship. Even in my own um, sort of sexual experience, what got me really engaged with this subject matter was I was in a relationship where the pop my partner turned around to me one day after six months and said like I don't like having sex oh. and as a young with man you or just I don't like having sex with me oh and as, a, as yeah as a young man I, I I think with you know with an ego I thought well what does that mean that's super mm. emasculating does that mean that I'm not hitting it right or like mm. that, do I maybe it's her problem you know whatever and so I went on that journey with, what did she mean so it's interesting because we separated yeah my reaction was very like and also, I turned to her and said, like, why? And she said, the next sentence was, I'm not comfortable talking about that with you. Oh. Yeah, so for me, that was like the door had closed. Of course it did, because where do you go with that? Yes, well, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I broke up with her. Yeah. And um, a year passes, we both go to different places. We both kind of, you know, figure ourselves out a little bit. And on her journey, she really got to understand that the, at the heart of her relationship with sex was this fear that had derived from previous relationships where the partner was very forceful, you know, um, apparent cheating all of those things that we kind of discussed mm. earlier so it wasn't that she necessarily didn't like having sex there was a lot of psychological work to be done on right. removing that fear of like abandonment and really if i made her feel safe mm. really really safe then the sexual appetite would return that's what happened mm. oh so a year later we get back together we yeah. end up having the best sex of our lives on an ongoing basis um and it was because she was able to understand. I was, okay, so if she was able to understand what was really going on, I was able to like be patient enough to like listen and, mm. you know, go for weeks and weeks and months with not having sexual intimacy and just be there, which allowed her to feel safe. Mm. And then beyond there, we were able to kind of like rebuild it. And Fantastic. Experiment. And we're still together today. Oh my God. So yes. this is your girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. I'll wow. have to ask her for permission to say this. So I'll show her the clip and make sure she's yeah. comfortable with yeah. it. But, um, but that's, God, that's an extraordinary story. So we went from a point of, I don't like having sex. I don't like having sex. Really, really bad situation to the best situation I think one can imagine in that department. Mm. Obviously communication was at the heart of it. Mm. Letting of my course, ego down. Always, yeah. And giving her space to, you know, and, and I give the credit to her because she figured that out. But that's what got me really into the subject matter because I've now got loads of friends that are in that situation. Mm. What, what I would say to your friends is, if your partner doesn't want to have sex with you, I wonder whether how good the sex is because a lot of women say no. I'm presuming these are straight couples. A lot of women say no to sex because the sex that's on offer is not that interesting to them. So for this, we need to talk about sex drives, spontaneous desire versus responsive desire. Have you heard of that? Yes. Yeah. From reading your book. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> so spontaneous desire is two thirds of men have spontaneous desire and it's the desire that everybody has at the beginning. And by the way, if you want to know somebody's resting libido, 
you can't, you've got to wait about a year. You have to wait about a year to find out what their real libido is because it's always so artificially inflated at the start, right? But so spontaneous desire, two thirds of men have this. It's it's the, you know, want to see, want to see, you know, seek sex, want sex, seek sex. They can go from people with spontaneous desire could be like scrolling through Instagram, somebody sexy walks past and it's like, wow, I'm instantly aroused for sex. They go from zero to a hundred very quickly. They seek out their mate, want sex, and they're off, right? Responsive desire means that you have no desire for sex or very little desire for sex until somebody is actually doing something to you sexually. So this is somebody who, you know, maybe <clears throat> is with their partner, their partner wants to have sex, they're not even slightly interested, but goes, okay, look, I'll give it a go. Then once start, things start happening, if their partner is very good at stimulating them and they enjoy the stimulation, all of a sudden they're like, yeah, actually, yeah, I'm enjoying this. That's the warming up. That's the warming up, right? Now, 30% of women have responsive desire. The rest of them are a mix between spontaneous and responsive. Most men, so you've got this situation where most men have spontaneous desire, most women are responsive. Most men are very happy to go straight to genital sex. They don't need warming up the way their anatomy works. For women, foreplay isn't a, a luxury, it's a necessity. Because in order for sex to be comfortable, you need the vagina to tent. So it literally puffs up so that it can, you know, take a, a penis comfortably. So if you don't wait for that to happen and you go male style sex, go straight for penetration, she's not even off the starting blocks and suddenly you're penetrating, sex isn't great and then it's all over. So for men, you could have like, not even thinking about sex to having finished within 10 minutes. For women, they need time to warm up because their sex drive is responsive. So they're almost like blinking it's over and they haven't even got to 5% desire. And this is the problem with couples and that's that's with i'm talking about a very basic couple who probably don't talk about sex and who aren't terribly sexually savvy so i think because i think people have an understanding vague understanding that women need more foreplay i mean that's been drummed into men hasn't it but i think that what women don't understand is that women think you know at the beginning it was great it was all spontaneous i desire was there you know when you get into a long-term relationship desire doesn't tap you on the shoulder anymore you have to create it and women I think think because they have that spontaneous desire is gone and they don't feel like sex, it just doesn't come out of the blue unless they start having sex. They think, oh, that just must mean I don't want sex anymore. Wow, something's wrong with me. I don't want sex anymore. You do want sex. It's just that you've got to be have sexy things happening to you before you feel the desire for sex. And if people understood that, if women understood it better and stopped saying, oh, well, it's obviously means my sex drive's gone. No, it hasn't. It's there. You've just got to have great stimulation and great sex to get it back. And the other thing about women is that women, we have this thing about that women want tame and they want romance and stuff. That's not true. So much research now shows that women like erotic wild sex. I mean, they've done these experiments with women where they'll show them erotic videos and they'll wire up the genitals to measure genital response. So when you're aroused as a woman, blood flows to the genitals, same as men, and you lubricate. So they're watching all these videos, various sexy videos, and they have to say, you know, full in the thing, is this arousing you? No, because society says, no, we're not supposed to be. And the genitals are like, are you kidding? What are you thinking? This is fantastic. I'm absolutely, say yes to this, say yes to this. So the, the you know, the, there's such a big difference between what we're taught and what we would like. So if your girlfriend's saying no to sex and you're in a long-term relationship, it's because you're not giving her interesting enough sex. Give her exciting erotic sex. Give her something like, actually, this is what we're going to do. I mean, look at Fifty Shades of Grey. That got middle-aged women wanting sex, but women who hadn't wanted sex for 20 years. I remember being on a holiday with my husband and we started talking to this couple. And it was around the time when Fifty Shades came out and she knew what I did. And she said, um, she said, God, I hadn't really had great sex with my partner. I wasn't interested in sex, you know, for like 10 years. She said, I read the book. I'm sitting there at two o'clock in the morning. I'm looking down at my partner. I'm thinking, I really just want to wake him up and have sex with him. And she said, and I've never, and, and then she said, and I read the books and suddenly I was back into this erotic sex with my husband. 
that I just forgotten, I'd forgotten about. Like you think of sex, it's like, oh God, here we go, kissing, a bit fumbling, you know, and then the routine sex, but give people something interesting. Like all your friends, give her really interesting scenarios. Take her somewhere sexy, push her out of her comfort zones. Don't give her romance. Don't give her, you know, give her sexy sex and then they'll be interested. Mm. <laughs> I'm thinking of my friends like posing that and how uncomfortable <laughs> they'd feel. <laughs> really? Like, babe, I want to drive to the countryside and da 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 Because you know, when you've been with someone and you've become that kind of sibling thing that you described yeah, earlier, yeah. they might almost look at you with a bit of- Horror. Horror, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't go straight from not talking about sex to like, and we're going to go to a lap dance yeah. club tonight. And no, you have, to, you have to have the conversation. You have to bite the bullet and have the conversation because the thing about sexless relationships, if you haven't had sex for a year with your partner, it is very unlikely you're going to have sex again with your partner unless you confront it head on. If you just think, yeah, this will pass, this will pass, it will never pass. You're not going to suddenly go, oh my God, look at that. We haven't had sex for five years. Let's go to bed now. No, it's got to the awkward, awkward, awkward stage. So, I mean, 30% of couples who have been together for two years or more don't have sex. Two years, not 10 years, two years. 30%. It is very easy to get out of the habit of sex. And once you're out of the habit of sex, the less often you do it. And then couples get into this thing where it's like, God, we haven't had sex for ages. But you know what? Next weekend, we'll have this marathon sex session and that'll make up for it all. And then the marathon sex session is like, God, how am I going to find time for that? Or, you know, that's a bit daunting. And then, of course, you'd have to have sex for like six weeks to make up for the session. So it just becomes more and more insurmountable. So I always say to people, just have little bite-sized bits of sex. You know, don't have, sex doesn't have to have a beginning, a middle and an end. Like have a big snogging session, have a thing where he gives you oral, you don't do any, you know, give nothing back or you give him oral or, you know, you just do something sensual together. You have a bath together. That counts as sex. You know, people think sex has to have intercourse in there. It doesn't. It's the least favorite bit for women. Take the intercourse out. Start doing little bite-sized stuff to reconnect sexually. It's like a frog in a frying pan, that old analogy of how slowly, that you know, mm. the frog doesn't realise it's being heated in the frying pan until the water's boiling and it's dead. Like it happens very, very gradually in relationships. Yes, it does. And then you get to a point where you go, how the hell did we get here? Yeah. And at that point... You have to have the talk. The talk. This is interesting because one of my, my friends was, I was talking to him about it and I was saying like, you've let it gradually stray so far and you're currently letting it, you're not addressing it, you need to stage a crisis. Mm. It's kind of the way I framed it to him, which is like, you need to say, stop. Like yes. this relationship has to stop. We have to have a conversation yes. now because I'm at a point now where I I'm either going to leave this relationship or I'm going to end up cheating or something. So yeah. we need to fix this together. And it needs to feel important yeah, or else it'll be allowed to simmer. That's exactly right. And of course, what lots of people do in that scenario is they just turn to porn. Yeah. And they just satisfy themselves with porn. But that's not ideal, obviously. Why? But you well, because it's it's pretty soulless sex, isn't it? Just watching porn and masturbating. I think, you know, there's it's really funny about porn actually, because I used to have a great relationship with porn. I used to say to people all the time, like, porn is your friend, watch it with your partner. It's great for, you know, if you've got a high sex drive and your partner doesn't, it it, you know, you can satisfy yourself. It it keeps your imagination, you know peaked you you know can satisfy that sense of newness by watching porn and now porn's moved into a really ugly stage with you know there's such a, a concentration on aggressive acts like spitting choking choking is terrible um slapping across the face it's become very much like that and young men are growing up to think that this is what a normal sex session is like this is normal real life sex it is not Porn is nothing like real life sex. And then women look at it and go, gosh, right, okay, that's obviously what's expected of me. This is what I have to do. And it's it's moving into a very nasty direction. They say unmet expectations equal unhappiness. So by setting expectations up here is like, mm. we're going to do this for an hour and I'm going to tie you up and spit on you and choke you and you're going to make this sound and you're going to mm. scream and you're going to tell me I'm this and you're going to say that I'm your father, whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> perverse thing it might be. Then for those unmet expectations equals unhappiness in the bedroom. You go, well, you know, I'm gonna have to go looking for something else. And exactly, and that's what young men do because they think that's what sex is gonna be about. It's not. So then they keep looking for the girls who will give them that. And then girls very quickly figure out, okay, if I wanna be liked, I have to do that. I've just done a big thing on choking. And um, and 
I interviewed all these young girls and it was it was horrifying. It was they they've been I mean between 58% of college students between the age of you know like had all been choked. I think 30% of them had been asked. And I'm not talking about, you know, symbolic choking of just putting a hand on the throat, which even that freaks me out. But I'm talking about, you know, cutting off wind supply. There was one girl who told me she was 21. She'd gone out with this guy. He seemed really nice. He started choking her. She said no. She passed out. She woke up next to this guy who was asleep. He then said to, and then she got herself out of there and was like, oh my God, you know, terrified. He texted her the next day and said, oh my God, babe, this sex was awesome. Let's meet up again. And she was, she was just like, how could you possibly think that that was good? And that worries me a lot. I think that, that, I mean, I, sex, I think is moving in a great way in lots of ways, particularly for young women, except for things like that. I think that is terrible. So no, you don't want to be satisfying yourself with porn, but you have to have the conversation if sex is now out of your marriage. You cannot just let it go and be the elephant in the room because exactly what you said is going to happen. You're going to leave or you're going to cheat. So you sit down with your partner and you say, listen, we really need to have a discussion about this. I love you desperately, um, but I miss our sex. I really, we used to have lovely sex. I love having sex with you. You're really desirable. It's, it's you know, and I can we talk about why this isn't happening anymore? Are you having the sort of, you know, is it that the sex that we're having isn't doing it for you? What can I do to make you, you know, want to have sex more often with me? Because I would really love to have sex with you more often. Can we have a discussion about this? Okay, I've got friends that have tried that. And what happened? Um, the partner doesn't necessarily know. It's a similar situation to what I felt, the one in the situation I described that I was in, where my partner turned around and said something, because they might not have the information themselves. They go, well, I just don't like having it. And they right. might not know that the you know the responsive s sex language that you talked about, mm. and they might not know what's going on with. Oh, I see. The partner might not know why she doesn't why want to have she sex. Does, why she or he doesn't like having sex. Um, and then I you kind of hit a wall, don't you? Well, that's when you educate yourself. That's when you give read a few of my books <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to yeah. give you a bit of education. But I mean. Okay, so the partner who wants sex is generally more driven. So maybe they could sexually edu educate themselves and say, you know, I've been reading up about this. Perhaps it might be because of this. Can we try having sex this way? But it's all about broaching the topic. And then, I mean, depending on the reaction, I mean, I know I've, you know, encouraged some people to have this talk and then they've got an answer, which is just startling. Well, they'll say, I don't want to have sex anymore. I'm not interested in solving this. So that's it. So you just have to put up with it. And that's what that, I, that's basically well, what I got. If somebody says that to you and they really, and you've tried on several occasions and you, I, I think that is grounds for walking out myself. And I did. Yeah. Yeah. And a miracle seems to have. <laughs> yes. Because then people did some soul. So and sometimes yeah, yeah. maybe you walk Separation. out and then the person thinks, well, gosh, actually that's not very mm. fair because monogamy is all about, you know, I pledge to only have sex with one person. Well, if that person withdraws sex, then where are you left apart from having solo sex and, you know, or you have an agreement. Okay. Well, if you won't have sex with me, then what are my options? My options are to satisfy myself, to cheat. Are you happy for me to seek the sex elsewhere? And lots of, lots of times people will say, yeah, actually I am. I don't want to know about it. I don't want it to be in our friendship group and we're going to have to have rules about this, but you know, some women are more than happy for that to happen. Or well, some men are more than happy for that to happen. It's not just a female thing here. Men go off sex as well. On this point of porn as well, there was, I read something recently about the shame that it's causing in, in people. Like I, th I think the study that I read, and I'm- Yeah, I think I read that too. About 40% of men that use, um, that masturbate to porn report to feeling a sense of shame. Mm. And then it, when we think about the sort of macro where we are in sex as a society right now, there is a decline of sex, isn't there, going on? Which Absolutely. is quite concerning. Yeah, there is a there's a sex re recession, and that's very much because, I mean, basically there wasn't a sex recession before social media, streaming, phones. It's all to do with that. We have too much to do. We basically just go off sex because we have other things to entertain us. You know, pre all that, ten thirty four on a Saturday night, most couples were having sex. There was nothing else to do. Mm. That was it. We just did too, you know, there's that going on. So we're too busy. We've got too many other things on our plate. That's the main problem with long-term couples. Then you have like, I think less face-to-face -face communication, which makes people quite nervous. If you haven't had sex before and you're dealing mainly with, you know, FaceTime calls, you know, 
video calls, which is what lots of young people are, when you're face to face, they get very nervous. They don't know anything about body language. They don't know how to connect and sex becomes scary. In Japan, there's something like 30%, no higher, I think more like 45% of people get to the age of in their 30s and they're virgins. They've never even had a sexual encounter. And they just, and if you don't give your body sex, your body doesn't want sex. So they could quite happily go through life completely sexless. That's what's going to end up happening with sex. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests. Uh -huh.